While I was looking through my anime stash, I found a genre that I know people will bash. But that hate warrants no pity. I know my taste in anime is shitty. Because I know that I'm isekai trash. Welcome to Radio Takus. I'm still mad that that you uh that you cut out the, that was the limerick. First limerick from the first episode. That was that was your own no, fault, no, dude. You, no. I, I no, claim no, no responsibility. No. That was all you. No, no. You literally read it like the way you did at the beginning, like like the way you did it like the first time around. You read it, so I thought you were just talking like normal. So I'm just like, <laughs> okay. What whatever. But to the topic at hand, welcome to Radio Takus. We're gonna talk about. The faded, isekai. the evil genre, isekais. Uh, but first things first, sorry online sucks. Second thing second, the main topic. Um, uh, I think isekais get a bad rap for the wrong reasons. In my opinion. So like, I don't think isekais are inherently bad because it's just, I think at its core. Oh, Let's let's first talk about what isekai is, and we're just gonna pull up the uh, Wikipedia definition because. Uh, I mean, yeah. If, if, we, if we just make up, no, I mean, literally, if we make up our own definition, like, like it's not it's not gonna fly, right? Because that just means we're, uh, we're uh, crafting the arguments to our own benefits, possibly. So we just have to find some objective definition. That we, that we could, like, go yeah, the of. objective definition of some random person on Pretty the much, internet. I mean, it's Wikipedia. I mean, but but like, how how far off can it be, right? This ain't tenth grade English. I can use this if I want to. I don't even need to mm -hmm. cite it. Uh, isekai is a genre of light novels, manga, anime, and video games that revolve around a normal person from Earth being transported to reborn or otherwise trapped in a parallel world, fantasy world, or virtual world. And I mean, this kind of this kind of uh, genre is not necessarily unique to anime because uh, I believe I have a couple, at least one book on my bookshelf that's like Western written, uh -huh. uh, the Pen Dragon series, oh. and that's like sort of isekai like, yeah, but yeah. it's definitely a lot more prominent in uh, in otaku culture. Yeah. Um, but I think that isekais are not inherently bad. They're, it's just kind of a cheap way to introduce a fantasy setting or a new world and maybe introduce a plot point relating to it somewhere down the line that probably won't even get mm -hmm. touched upon. But I think the biggest rap with isekais is that there are a lot of them and so many are just so hopeful. Uh, it's just so un not creative in any way, shape, or form. Much. It's like, oh, it's a fantasy setting, but let's do nothing with it. And I, and I think that, like, lots of isekais could be good if there's a large focus around, like, some gimmick, mm -hmm. you know? A lot of the isekais that we, that the two of us enjoy have, like, some main gimmick. Yeah. I say gimmick because I've been watching too much Alpha Ride, <laughs> okay. granted, but, like, the ma uh, just, like, one major recurring... Yeah. Yeah, like, like uh, plot point. Like I, I use gimmick because I don't have a better word for it. But in the example of like ReZero, it's the it's the whole rebirth aspect of it. Although, although for the ReZero one, you could you could also say that ReZero can be done in high fantasy setting without going through the whole role transfer thing because it can it, Subaru can just be like a random person in the universe and then maybe the witch just took a liking to him and then just decided to give him the um respawning benefits so like it's not like him being from earth really mattered um in the end yeah and as you go through the plot of Reezer, you find out that like Subaru's time at, in earth is kind of mm. irrelevant this, it's not really one of those uh, Isekai shows where, oh, I'm going to bring in all of this technology, just introduce it to the world. Yeah. Like, I am going to be the god's crea uh, greatest inventor. It, it's not anything like that. It's a very much more narrative story about yeah. Subaru I'm... rather than the world itself. And I don't think that there's a very... I don't think there's a golden formula of, of uh, combinations of world building, character building, and story writing that creates a good 
isekai, mm-hmm. you know? Because, like, you can, you um, as shows like uh, Konosuba show, you can have a pretty good isekai with, like, very minimal world building. <laughs> the series could work even if there was no world building and they stayed eternally at, at the, the at beginning the adventure, town. At, at adventure, um, beginning town? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The comedy and character writing is written so well that it doesn't really matter if it, if it's there or not. I think it only adds to how good of a series it actually is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can go back to that point later because uh, later on we're going to talk about some good isekai shows. And then you'll see that a common trait that all of them would share is that they have very good writing in some departments. It can be good character writing. It can be good world building. It can be good narratives. Um or there's something good that's carrying the show. And then in the end, you'll just come to realize, oh, wait, these things are sh- are good traits that we're inherently um, looking for in shows. So does it matter that it's a, it's a, it's a kai or not? Like, can't we just enjoy it as a, for example, high fantasy show, a um, virtual dive show, or, you know, a parody without it being an isekai? Can, can we just enjoy it based on its secondary genre? Um, because I feel like a lot of times when, like these days, right? These days when people say, "Oh, we have another Isek adaptation um, this season," well, what do we, what do people usually associate with Isekai? Like, what, what would you think? Oh, terrible, okay, terrible okay. writing. Think terrible writing. Okay. Maybe it's bad. C- maybe some bad <laughs> CGI, uh, considering some of the shows that's so, gone out. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Like, I mean, that's kind of like the byproduct, right? But when I when people say isekai, when people say there's an isekai ad- adaptation, I immediately think it's a light novel adaptation. It's a harem. <laughs> Those two things are hand in hand usually. And the third thing is maybe maybe it's a high fantasy show, but maybe it's a or or it's a video game show. It's one or the other. So there are three things that you can already assume about like isekai shows when you talk about an anime adaptation, which is pretty bad, right? Because I mean, I blame all of that on Sora Online, personally. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, I kind of blame it on the writers themselves, because the writing the writing for most isekai shows aren't anything, partic- aren't anything particularly good, but they get carried by um, a lot of the artists um, that work alongside the author. So a lot of them are very active on Twitter. Um, there's one called Kakao right now. Um, he writes a lot of doujins, but then... Right now he's working on a, on a um, how do I say, on a new title, which is basically another isek, which is basically another um isekai harem, pretty much. So yeah. Dude, we we love the dojin artists to actual manga yeah. artists. Uh, yeah, the, um, Shokukiki is one of them, right? I don't I don't know, but okay. I wouldn't. Oh, yeah, I would not I'm pretty sure Shokukiki is one of them. And Tulip Brew might be another one, although his his manga is pretty much dojin to begin with. So yeah. <laughs> I, I'm reading the section that you have on our oh. little document that we have written for each show, and you and the the first thing you say under how we feel about isekais as a whole is it's an overdone genre. Pretty much, and and that and that's complete and that's a hundred percent true. There's, well, okay, I, it's overdone in that there are too many show uh, isekai shows that are just bad and yeah. they're prominent. Because there, they're there are too many that's being adapted right now, just because it has good um, light novel art. But that's the thing, right? Okay, sure. Um, the what carried it is the light novel art to begin with, but the adaptation doesn't success, doesn't doesn't inherit that art, you know. <laughs> like one one that we can talk about is Yojo Senki, right? Yojo Senki has really good art, and then and then look at the adaptation. What is that? Same thing with Overlord, right? Overlord has some insane cover arts. Um, yeah, it's yeah. So 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 when isekais get an adaptation, they don't inherit the strength that carried it to its to to where the series is to begin with. So I, I don't yeah it's, the the genre is pretty hopeless basically. And like a lot of times, um, isekais are just a vehicle for the author to to write a fantasy show pretty much. Because the most common the most common ones that people think of are are fantasy shows most. Likely because the fantasy shows have a diverse setting that the author can make very liberal use of. It's got multiple races. It's got well, it can basically appeal to everyone's fetish, pretty much. Um, that's a plus. 
and it's boring to be isekai into modern world essentially so so like if you're gonna keep the isekai into into um planet earth you might as well just write a story based on planet earth right i mean yeah i mean that's not necessarily the uh the worst thing we have plenty of good reverse isekais like I guess, well, Gate's technically a two-way mm-hmm. isekai. It's not particularly bad. Recreators is a... It's a wonderful show, but... I mean, it it does deviate a little bit from the action side of it throughout a chunk of the second half of the show. Yeah, uh, Recre... Shirobako, the action pretty anime. Pretty much. Pretty much. If Shirobako was a shonen, uh, it would be Recreators. Yeah. The other two that we have listed on here is uh, The Devil's yeah. Part-Timer and The Fate Series. Yeah and both of which are just kind of unique and granted uh bluff and i think just like bringing them bringing other characters into earth is it's not exactly like innovative with all these shows that we just listed but it's refreshing from the terrible garbage that is a lot of a lot of shows i mean i mean with isekai's with isekais, it's been done so many times, right? Now that now there are even tropes within isekai, so people always get transported via a truck or getting hit by a truck, pretty much, right? You get Konosuba makes a gag at the at episode one, um, where you thought Kazuma got ran over by a by a truck or a tractor, but in the end, he actually just died from shock. So, I'm I'm trying to remember how many other how many like. Uh, isekai protagonist actually got glomped by truck mm, this one isn't this one isn't an isekai per se i mean i guess you could call it an isekai but uh yu yu hakusho the main character um Yus- yusuke dies from a truck and then he gets sent to the underworld and he becomes a spirit detective so you can consider the underworld a um isekai or like a parallel dimension i guess but it eventually comes back to i don't know if, it, if it's not on uh the um the anime man's tier list then i don't count i'm just kidding (laughs) um i mean you have it in other genres like zombie land saga yeah pretty much but Uh, but then subaru was also hit by was also i don't know i think i think he just blanked out he blanked out on the streets and then he just showed up in um the re-zero universe I should know this. I I, I, don't, I watched ReZero like only a yeah, few yeah, months ago. Yeah, I'm pretty sure ago, he just blanked but... out. He, he left the convenience store and he just blanked out. But it, I've seen it all in a, quite a few of the manga that I've read. Because I read a lot of mm-hmm. manga. And I read a lot of isekai manga. And, I mean, find more creative ways of killing people, dude. <laughs> That's all I have to say. <laughs> and, I mean, what I want to see more of from isekais is slow life isekais and we're gonna see a, um at least one of those show up in the future seasons with uh i don't remember the name of the show but it's a show about a pharmacy a pharmacist in another world and that's the kind of show that i would like to see more of granted i think that particular manga is a little bit boring but could i mean I think slow life manga are just nice. Like, think of your camp in another world. That would be great. Then just write your camp in another in in another world. It doesn't have to be an isekai. It can just be a. It can oh, just be right. a story set in a high fantasy universe, or it can be a story set in a video game universe. It could be. It could be anything. It could be anything. It just doesn't have to be isekai. I, I don't see why people insist on using isekai as a vehicle. Like, I get having a character be isekai it means that you can bring in cheap cheap relatable points were uh, like between the main character and the audience so for example if the guy who dies is an otaku if the guy who dies is an adult who is working like 24 7 it can resonate with some people but but more often than not they use they use that fact about the main character at, at like chapter one or maybe even volume one and then after that they just forget about it they just forget the they just forget the whole thing they just forget the whole isekai thing. They forget the whole background of the character, and then, and then the whole story being an isekai is just meaningless. You can just write a normal high fantasy story, and you can very easily write a high fantasy uh, write a story in a fantasy setting that breaks the fourth wall, and that would be that would be perfectly fine. It doesn't have to be an isekai. 
I, I just think isekai, rather than being like an overdone genre, it's just like a meaningless thing to add to stories. Like there's there's no reason. There's no there are no good reasons to write an isekai story unless you're writing a parody like No Game No Life or Konosuba. And but like anything any other reason, it's better to just write the story genuinely as is like. If you want to write a fantasy story, just write a fantasy story. If you want to write a video game competition, there's one um, Chinese um, cartoon called The King's Avatar. That that show is a basically a shonen series about esports, and the whole thing is about video games. And it's it's <laughs> it's a show about video games, and it's fun, and it's not an isekai, and it's pretty popular. Just watch High Score Girl, dude. Yeah, yeah, literal. <laughs> That's not even that's not even an isekai, but uh, that's just about video games. But like, just just watch High Score. No, um, and a lot of times when people write about video game worlds, it's literally like video game worlds and high fantasy to me are the same. When in anime, it's just, like video game worlds is just a different video game world. Is just it's just a question of are you trapped there or are you going in and out voluntarily? Or more like um, it's just a cheap way to include a exp or progression system and. Um, other like weird UI stuff. So like I think the, the I think the one show that uses the video game mechanics pretty well is um, Lock Horizon. Um, Lock Horizon and I think Overlord does it kind of decently too. Um, those two those two shows are actually good video game isekais that kind of makes makes use of the video game mechanics. But like any other show that uses like video game that base their isekai base their isekai world on video games, it's just it's just a high fantasy. I find a lot of the video game fantasy uh, type shows, they don't really delve into the mechanics Pretty of much. the game as much. Obviously, if you're playing, um, like, you know, fighting is always going to be the same regarding isekais because, you know, you're not just doing a, oh, I'm going to select this skill. I'm just going to act, you're, I'm just actually going to act out, yeah. you know, with the yeah. sword that I have in my hand that's actually physical instead of yeah. virtual now. But there's just, not much explanation on like character progression or um or world <laughs> advancing and it just kind of you know it kind of doesn't feel like a video game world unless you're actively going back and forth in which case okay that's that's innovative. but i also do uh, agree with your point there are fantastic manga series that are just based off of like fantasy type settings and aren't isekais Two, sh uh, two manga that I'm really partial toward are Dungeon Meshi and Soso no Fear. And, and just to be clear, my Japanese pronunciation is awful. My Japanese pronunciation is just like that of somebody who's taken Duolingo for the first unit and okay. quit. I'll probably add subtitles then on the on the screen. Like some, some, some visual and some text will pop up on the screen. All right. All right. If you're on YouTube. I mean, Dungeon, Dungeon Meshi is fine as is, but... Uh, the English title for the other one is Frieren at the Funeral. And those two are amazing series. Dun Dun dungeon Meshi being about just like cooking okay. animals that you find in a dungeon into actual meals. And like that's the kind of slow life lo uh, show that I was talking about with a little bit of like action interspersed in between it. And that has zero isekai setting. And Frieren at the Funeral might have come after an isekai, but it's really just about an elf that lives pa uh, after her old teammates have passed away from old age because elves live longer than humans and other species in a fantasy series. And that is an amazing, amazing slice of life show in a fantasy setting. No isekai. But at the same time, there are, I mean, you can, you can write good isekais. I think you just want to do something with it. Because I'm sure that ReZero will gradually expand upon why Subaru is important because yeah. he kind of doesn't have major world changing impact in his side of the in uh the first season of ReZero. And now that ReZero isn't getting delayed again well sort of half of it's getting delayed, but besides the point. <laughs> and then shows like Log Horizon, yes you're trapped in your video game world but you're also trying uh, trying to get out, which is, I think, different than how Sword Art Online takes it, because it's a, it isn't a cheap harem show. I mean, in SAO, there was a clear goal, right? Like, like in SAO, the method is clear-cut. Like, 
defeat the final boss, leave the dungeon. But in Lock Horizon, nobody knows what's going on. Nobody knows what the exit, what the clear condition is. So they're they're just going about their lives in a video game as they normally would. They're just building a civilization because that makes their own lives more comfortable as they're trying to figure out a way to leave the world. And yeah, and I mean, the Lock Horizon is pretty much a like a slow life show, like you said, right? It's pretty much a it's pretty much a slice of life show when they're not doing dungeon crawling. For shows like uh, No Game No Life, it's I mean you don't do anything directly with the fact that they're coming really? from another world besides the fact that they just big yeah, brain. Yeah, they, they don't they know a lot no, of trivia about their own world. <laughs> they're they're trying to kill God. They're trying to beat God. Like what what do you what do you think? Like no, the gods inviting them to the world. And now they're trying to beat them in the game. Like yes, it's based on isekai mm-hmm. tropes. Like um, I I feel like in the light novel they'll probably explain the um. The god, what's his name? I think it was Tet. Tet's motivation more because Tet. Yeah, something like that. Tet, yeah, Tet was the god of humans, right? So and then and he invites humans over. So and he also invited humans that looked like basically the two messiahs of the human race when the when the races are all fighting. So there has to, there's probably some kind of reason behind it, but that's not important. What's important uh, in our discussion is how it makes use of Isaka, right? So. So Sora and Shiro both bring a lot of worldly knowledge, right? Or in the Isekai world, it will be otherworldly knowledge, right? Because it will be it will come from a different world, and um, this is another thing that ReZero also does. They also bring in gadgets from our world to progress the storyline. So like in ReZero, it was the potato chip. It was the um, what else did he bring? He brought a phone, right? He brought a phone and he called it, a, a Subaru called it a Meteor. Basically, he was basically trying to scam people into um, giving out information, but in the end, the phone turns out to be a pretty valuable thing, right? Because in the end, he also used it as a flashlight in the anime um, during the whale arc and whatnot. So yeah, um, um, oh, and, and what's it called? In No Game, No Life, the counterpart would be the iPad that has all the Wikipedia articles or all the video game guides that ha- that they have installed in their iPad. Okay. I'm gonna be honest, I completely forgot about yeah, the yeah, iPad. Yeah, that was a pretty big thing, right? That was that was. <laughs> it it was a big thing, and somehow it just completely escaped yeah, it was, my mind. it was something they used to bargain with Jibril, which was a powerhouse um, powerhouse race in No Game No Life's universe. So, so those are the things that actually matter in the story. So like th- those are narrative elements that wouldn't be possible without it being isekai but then something that no game no life does that's something that no game no life does more than re-zero as an isekai is bringing in references during dialogue and whatnot like during critical moments um you would often see uh references to other video games or anime um from our world and those happen because they are also otakus, and it makes sense, right? It, it makes sense that when they can act out a cool scene that they really like in like a show, they would they would act it out, like in the carriage carriage scene with the elf and the human. I forgot their name. Um, they you, they had a JoJo reference scene right there. Um, yeah, they they had, they, had, they had a reference. They also have Phoenix Wright references during the court during the courtroom. Like the judge himself was this basically the same model that they used in phoenix right and they also used the same bgm i don't know how they got away with the bgm part they probably bought like the rights to the track or whatever but yeah no game no life does a lot of things with it being an isekai to add humor to its um to its to its story like moving on to konosuba it's kind of a lot of the sh- uh the things that they bring in from the other world are kind of just comedic things rather than like you know actual story relevant things because jokes on you there's actually a story in Konosuba <laughs> <laughs> but the the gag about Aqua just not giving a damn about Kazuma's uh, track jacket even though it's kind of an ugly yeah. track jacket not gonna all hug. you know the, ga- the gag about her just like burning it and then Kazuma just being an attacker or just only played off for comedic purposes and kind of just really have no relevance to the actual plot but the big, uh, I think the biggest uh, thing that is actually relevant to the plot is when Cosmos selling the ideas of like the Katatsu and Japanese culture yep. things to, the, to, to the mind uh, reading whatever the guy's name is. Yep. I don't remember. I don't remember. And I mean, that, that's just money and they're broke. But it's also pretty comedic because they're broke and 
and Cosmo's trying to just selling his own culture for money. <laughs> a lot of the Konosuba's humor also comes from um, expectation subversion, and just because like the expectations are expectations that we have within the genre or within or within the isekai genre or within the video game um, culture or within otaku culture essentially, and whenever they subvert that expectation, it also reminds us that it's an isekai show because in the in the genuine high fantasy show when are you gonna <laughs> when when are you when are you gonna get jokes about the main character being an otaku when are you gonna get jokes about the main character dying to a truck well from shock and not from the physical impact <laughs> like these are these are things that isekais can uniquely do that other genres cannot and Yet it's such an underused, it's such an underused um technique, or I I I don't even know if it's technique. It's um, re making references to our world's culture and our world's um expectations. It's something that isekais can uniquely do, and yet most shows or most um light novels, I guess, don't do that. And if you're not gonna do that, you're basically give you're basically throwing away the one strength that an isekai has, which is its relatability, like. The relatability of the main character being an otaku is only a surface level, like, relation. It's, it, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean, who cares that the main character was an otaku before he get transported? Now he's a, now he's a what? Now he's an adventurer. Now he's a merchant. Now he's a, now, now he's anything. He can be anything. It doesn't matter. His old life doesn't matter. That's what, that's what happens in every isekai show. Like, well, what other popular isekai shows are there? Like, we can talk about SAO, right? Kirito was a was a what was a high school student. It doesn't matter. He ended up becoming a swordsman anyways in the in the in the video game. Like in so many shows, the past life of the main character just does not does not matter at all. But whereas in shows like No Game No Life, in shows like Konosuba, they keep they keep coming back and aiding the characters in their own journey. And that's what that's what's impressive about these kind of isekais. And the two other series that we have on our like god tier isekai god -tier. is uh yojo senki which we touched which we touched on uh, a little mm -hmm. bit earlier and that time i got reincarnated as a slime which is a little it's i think it's like a little bit below the rest of the anime on this list but it's still mm -hmm. good and it's very good by um by isekai standards though even if if it doesn't necessarily relate to the same uh the same uh, principles of relatability that we've talked about with other isekais. I mean, the one thing that makes Tensura or the slime isekai different from the other shows is that <laughs> the very fact, the fact that he's isekai, kind of does matter, right? Because he was an adult when he got isekai, so he he brings into the show a level-headedness and a maturity that most characters wouldn't have. Although then you can say, oh, then he could just be a any random dude in the world, right? Then he could just be any random dude in the fantasy world who has a more level head than other people. Then you can make that argument. But then another thing that yeah, and and it's a question of like, if you tra if you just turned a random guy from the world into a slime and then just put him in the same position that he was into, just throw him into a dark the dark cave where Valdora is, would that show be any different? Mm -hmm. You know. Um, yeah, uh, so one other thing that Tensura does that, you know, makes it okay to be considered as an isekai is the, well, I kind of hate to say this because uh, we, we all make jokes about how isekai main characters are broken and all that garbage, right? They're broken, so there's no threat, there's no tension in the show, um, the show doesn't, the, the, the story wouldn't, doesn't function as a genuine, you know, um, I guess you could say a genuine shonen because there are no stakes because the, you know the main character is so piss broken that he will just overcome anything but here in Tensura they actually make use of the OP um, trait of the main character pretty well in the um, Great Sage I think that's what that's what they localized it as um, yeah Great yeah, Sage like the Great Sage is essentially like a unique ability and in, in the whole world like only the main character has it and Without that ability, the show just wouldn't work, right? Without that ability, without that ability, the main character as a slime wouldn't be able to develop the ability to navigate the cave and end up meeting Veldora in 
furthermore communicate with him. And and I think yep. that the overpowered main character is definitely a trope that we see a lot of in isekais. Mm -hmm. There's not really as many training arcs, uh, rather uh, compared to oh instant spike from zero to a hundred in my detection skill. <laughs> um, and you have shows that make humor of this, like uh, Shincho Yusha or Cautious mm -hmm. Hero, where it's just like the entire point is the character is supposed to be. Oh broken. wait, that's also isekai. But it's just played off as a gag. That's a good series. We forgot to add that on the yeah, list. Yeah, we did forget but... to add that show onto the list. Um, although that show got carried pretty hard by the voice acting rather than the yeah. writing. So, uh, I, I I'd say it's a show that actually benefited from having an adaptation. So yeah. Um. Oh, also another good isekai that people often overlook is Spirited Away. People just kind of forget that uh, Spirited it's Away an is an exactly, isekai. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spirited Away. I mean, I, I don't think we need to spend too much time on Spirited Away. It's just a good isekai. And it's an isekai that also brings in elements of our world, right? It brings in Japanese culture. It brings in uh, mannerisms that uh, ja Japanese expect of young children. It brings in mannerisms that they expect of adults. Um, so yeah, it, it brings in a lot of elements from our world into a fantasy world, which is what makes it great. Um, another one- I remember uh, Miyazaki saying that, like, the reason why he wrote this is to, like, empower young girls to be, like, you know, uh, to be adventurous. Because, like, a lot of, like, Disney princesses and stuff that many young children or young girls would look to for inspiration, they're in, like, their teens, in their, their 20s. Mm -hmm. They're, like, old, you know, older than, uh, than- They're adults, basically, A lot of right? their, the, uh, they're, they're, they're audience that's watching them. Yeah. Yeah, and Chihiro is... That's her name, right? Yeah. Uh, the, the main character of Spirited Away is like six or seven. Yeah, she's, she's just a okay, child. Maybe she, ten. She's... Something. she's young. She's their age, and that's and that goes along with the relatability of what we're talking yeah. about, where the target audience is the same age as the main character. Uh, oh, we, we haven't talked about Yojo Senki yeah. yet oh, okay. as much as we could have. I... I this is one of the series that I researched specifically for this episode. As soon as we said that, uh, as soon as we said that I was gonna do an isekai episode, I was like, "All right, I'm gonna watch a really good isekai, a really mediocre isekai, and then a really a bad, bad isekai." isekai. Yes. And then this was the this was the good isekai that we watched that <laughs> that I watched, and God, that was an interesting series World War II, to say baby. the least. Yeah, I I think that that's probably the biggest interesting thing, like. Well, usually when we go to, uh, when isekais take main characters to a parallel world, it's it's like a fantasy type setting, much, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, let's just turn back the clock 700 years. Whereas, this is literally World War II with magic. Which is less than a century and away from people who really don't care about the lollies being at the head of command for some reason, you know? Okay, that's, that's kind of interesting, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, like... And the fact that it's a it's a twist on World War Two, and the main characters bring in the knowledge of what happened in his world's World War Two, along with being a sadistic, cynical, asshole. It feels wrong to say that of a really? nine year old, but really? whatever. No, I think he's just I think he's just tired of <laughs> he's just tired of um everything. He's tired of. Well, you know, he he's he's a cynical asshole because of the god or oh really you Maybe. think it's because of the god i think he's just tired of the structure no he, he is okay hold on let me yeah. read it. he's an asshole and then he and then he's just frustrated by god just trying to fuck him over every at every mm -hmm. possible mm -hmm. moment mm -hmm. I, I that that's what i was going for i, I apologize <laughs> i i took it as him being frustrated at first of like first before he died um the corporate culture at his place because because in like pretty much asian countries in general like the there's a very strict hierarchy. There are very strict rules in many workplaces. And Japan is one of those places that has like, that makes sure their employees follow those strict rules. So I think he was very tired of those to begin with. And then to put him in an army, which, which is basically the steroid version of um, a workplace where every rule must be followed because if you don't, then well, the officer on top is going to chew you out pretty much. So I, th I think he was pretty just frustrated at the whole um, 
situation that he was placed in, both before and after his life. And then to add a top of that, somebody there's there's a higher being that basically wants to screw him over. It's, yeah, it, it just makes the whole show pretty hilarious. Actually, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny because it's it's funny to see um, a character who is who is frustrated at his um, current situation, but also has a reason to blame. Um, but also has a but also has a higher force to place their blame on. Because a lot of times when people, when something unfortunate happens to you, right, you'll just be like, oh, unlucky, right? You'll, you'll get in a game of League, for example, and then you get like garbage teammates and you'll be like, oh, unlucky matchmaking. A lot of times they often try to uh, push those unfortunate, unfortunate things that happen to us onto some other external force that we cannot control. And in, in, and in this case, it would he would be right, right? He's in this it's situation. literally just God giving you a, the middle yeah, finger yeah, and saying, "Hey, here's that. four bronze teammates in your diamond game. Sorry." <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's yeah, it's it's refreshing. I think it, maybe not hilarious. It's refreshing to see a character be in a position where he genuinely has no control of, but he's still trying to do his best to make the best out of his situation. And a lot of a lot of that um lack of control that he has adds to the tension of the show because even if a arc or like some threat has resolved you never know if the god is just going to come in again and be like oh here's another here's another threat that you have to overcome or um i'm gonna transport you to another division just because you may crowd your way up here uh, after like two years or something right he was in the department for two years and then suddenly he was transferred to the front line <laughs> so he basically worked his way um throughout the first half of the series to to be in a high position, like to be in a high ranking, so that he could stay in the back lines, and be safe from the war, basically. And then the god just says, "Well, no, now you're getting transported to the front line. I don't care how hard you worked before. That's just how it is." And that was a pretty that was a pretty good moment in that in the show. Yeah, and let's uh let's talk about some of the like average mm -hmm. and forgettable isekais yeah, now. Forgettable. <laughs> Because, like, we've definitely beaten to death about, like, what makes good isekais, like, good, you know? Mm -hmm. And, like, each of the, f uh, what was it, like, seven or eight series that we've mentioned definitely have, like, their aspects of what makes things good. Yeah. But, like, a lot, of, a lot of these eight shows that we have listed, we're not going to go into all of them in super depth. Mm -hmm. They're all just, like, excessively mediocre. And I've to be fair, I've only watched half of the ones that are on this list. Most of them are me, but... yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the the big one that I want to talk about, or I guess the big two, uh, Overlord. but the first one is Shield Hero, oh, Shield Hero. Yep, yep. and I think Shield Hero is so, so mediocre, because <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I read, I read the, uh, the manga before it started becoming an anime, uh -huh. and the fact that they just skipped over a bunch of it, I, this isn't like an isekai uh, specific thing, but the fact that they just skipped over a lot of like the slow life, and they felt like they just rushed through potentially like three episodes of stuff mm -hmm. just to get to the next plot point mm -hmm. just really frustrated me. And then the bird turned into a lolly and then everything went downhill from there. I the, Okay, so the only thing, the only two things that I remember about a show were that its openings are pretty well made. It's, some of the scenes are pretty cool and they're pretty well choreographed. Um, I don't remember if the actual episodes themselves were as well made or well put together. I don't think they were. Because if they were, I think it was like decent. Yeah, they, they were. They were. I think they were passable. But the opening is like pretty standout. Both the soundtrack and the visuals. Another thing that I remember. Oh, the soundtrack for Shield Hero was great. Mm, yeah, it was, it, the soundtrack was like actually good. Yeah, it's banger. Dude. And when to be clear, when I say that, uh, when I show frustration at the bird being a lolly, the frustration lies with said bird lolly trying to fuck the MC. <laughs> Yeah, there's a tag for that. It's um bestiality and um lollycon. So yeah, go on. It yeah. it's <laughs> uh, oh, it's just oh no. But I mean, the one thing, and I know this has been over like talked about to death, but it's just that in order to bring the main character up, you make everybody else absolutely incompetent yep. and. I mean, there's a lot of, like, frustrating things about the show. And I think the premise of the show could have been great, but then they just continued to beat on the same points of, oh, 
MC's a MC's a good guy, but he's just but the world hates him, so I'm just gonna make everybody else stupid, and uh, the maker are just gonna have to deal with all the idiots. It's just like playing through ranked in League of Legends. Yeah, the so so the show had one really really good um one emotionally rewarding moment when basically like the princess who put him through all the mess to begin with got punished. But gets her just deserts. Yeah. yeah, that was. But that was a good payoff moment. Like, it, it, and it's something that you know is going to happen. Yeah. So it's not. So it's not really like that much of a spoiler. Like, it's been building up. But spoiler alert: she comes back in the uh, in subsequent seasons. Who knew that like not killing the person that's had it out for you is gonna come back to bite you? <laughs> Who would have thought? It doesn't. It it doesn't. Like you know, it's gonna happen. Mm. And you know it's immediately gonna happen as soon as you as soon as uh the the satisfying moment happens. But it just kind of like I guess that, that was like that's a fairly good play on uh Naofumi's humanity mm-hmm. and like the morals of his previous world. Mm-hmm. But I mean I think the series just is a little bit like frustrating as a whole, but mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, um, and then, the, uh, Shield Hero yeah. is a very, I think Shield Hero benefits a lot in the same way that Shinkai films do. It's a very emotionally charged show, um, or a manga, if you, if you're reading the source material. Like, there are very compelling reasons to be supportive or be opposed, again, opposed to a character in the, in the manga. And it makes it very easy to latch onto a character, and I feel like that's good. That's good um, setup, or I mean, I, I don't want to say it's good writing, because it's the writing isn't anything particularly good, but it's a very good manipulation of the audience's um, emotions, and that's something I realized a lot of Japanese authors tend to be good at is that they're not necessarily good at writing themselves, but they're good at manipulating the audience's um, feelings towards towards their story basically which which i guess you could in, you could call it good writing but it's not good writing in a traditional sense so um i feel like shield hero has very um compelling characters to be attached or be hateful towards and that's why um the show has such a such a strong um manga and anime following when it came out yeah um i'm, try- I'm just looking over the the list of isekais that we have and trying to figure out where to go next from here i mean we could we could um, just go in order right we could talk about drifters next yeah let's just go let's just go down the list uh and then just skip shield hero which was like at four yeah uh i've not watched i have not watched drifters mm-hmm. um so oh do you know what yeah. the show is about then i have no clue what oh okay okay so all it's based... the shows yep. that you have on here that i haven't watched i've known nothing about all right all right so drifters is basically um drifters is basically fate but there are only two masters the one master is basically the um the lawful good faction and then the other one is the chaotic evil faction pretty much um i won't spoil who the who the leaders of either faction are either factions are but basically those leaders it's obviously Saber and Archer. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. They basically summon a bunch of um, famous people uh, in history, usually related to um, war times or like warring periods. So a lot of samurais from the Japanese um, warring periods get resurrected and fight in the battle. Um, there are Western, Western um, notable people who get resurrected as well so like like certain pilots and certain um oh, what do you call it? who what do you call those generals like I, I think julius caesar gets resurrected i think or some something some 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 greek some some roman got resurrected pretty much but yeah but, and it's basically just a free for all between um people from different eras so yeah it's basically fate it's basically fate but it has it's basically fate but done worse than fate <laughs> well it's done worse than fate because it has, it does have waifus. All right, that's the only reason it's worse than fate. Okay, it's it's basically fate, but written by the guy. Who we we gotta thank the misogyny of literally nineteen hundred years, of history for that. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. They're they're like, oh my god, yeah. Were, were there even any girls? I think there were like only a handful of girls in the show, and most of them were guys. 
Yeah. Oh well. But yeah, but, um, the show the show is basically a action show. Um, if you take away the label of it being a isekai, it's just a it's just a fun to watch um action show, pretty much like housing and Trigun. So yeah, um, nothing much to say about it. It's just a memorable. It's it's just a. It's just a show that's memorable for its action, not for it being a isekai. And next on this list, you have Grimgar. Grimgar. Uh, Grimgar. Do you know? I what? remember people talking about this. Yeah. I remember some people just thinking that was absolutely just boring as hell mm -hmm. and nothing happening. And I know some people were, were like okay with it. Um, I really like the visual visual style of the of the show because a lot of it feels like looks like it's uh, water painted which is very unique in anime um another thing is um i think the people who say it's boring uh, yeah it's pretty much a slow life show until certain episodes um until one until one episode when a character dies basically and after that it transitions into a slow life episode where pe they try to cope with the loss of their party member and whatnot um God, just kill them all, please. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's basically it's basically a high fantasy show because when the characters got transported into the fantasy world, the memories of their previous life gets wiped. So so they know they got isekai, but they don't know where they came from. So why does it have to be an isekai? It could just be a normal thing. It could just be a normal. Adventure or party that formed and, like with a bunch and of and plus beginners. you can give them like backstory and then like well more backstory and then like you know yeah. further narrative somewhere in the storyline and yeah, nobody remembers why nobody remembers that it's an isekai show by the end of the show like there are no goals their only goal is to get stronger and survive and there are no talks about returning to their own world it's it's a high fantasy show period not an isekai and then we have uh, Overlord on next on the list which is a video game isekai pretty much um, yeah this is the this is the second of shows that i watched for research um and i would say this is this is a mediocre show but like i wouldn't say it's necessarily bad it's like you know it's got good things going for it up until the point where they had that one cgi <laughs> i only watched one i only watched one episode of it uh or one not one, one episode, season one season of it to be clear yeah. And, I mean, it was, like, sort of interesting. And I think that the way that they portrayed the, uh, the, uh, death in the world was a lot better than how Sora Online handled it. Mm -hmm. I really like the show's opening. I think, uh, OXT did a really good job with all three openings that they did. Oh, all three? I think they did, only did two, actually. Um, but yeah, basically the openings are pretty banger. Um, I, th I think what's interesting about the show is, like, how they made a very clear difference that it was that uh it was a difference between the video game that the main character played and mm -hmm. then the new world that's mm -hmm. based around the same world. Yeah, it's basically ba so. Yeah, it's it's essentially they took a slice of the video game world, the moment it, the video game got shut down, and then they just duplicated it and just they just built the isekai world around that slice because. So, so so the reason why I say I said slice is because the main character essentially modified a script in the game and that modification ref was reflected when um, the isekai world became realized essentially well it's not really a script it's more like a character setting but yeah he, the character basically made a change that's within the video game and it got reflected after the video game world became real and the show actually does make decent use of the fact that it's a <laughs> that that makes decent use of the fact that it was a video game world to begin with because um they make a lot of references to a lot of references to um gacha weapons or was it gacha weapons or was it pay to pay to use weapons it was a cash shop weapon yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's basically yeah, yeah. Uh, weapons that you can only have by paying for the game so, so it's basically busted it's pay to win it's the game's pay to win guys it's it's garbage game don't play it <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that next episode. Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, no, I thought that was a funny detail to include. I also think that um, the characters that the main cast was pretty diverse, and I liked it. Um, I I liked the main cast. Um, how diverse they were. Um, I didn't like the visual presentation of the show though. I liked the light novel more, and that is one of the shows that really hurt from the adaptation, not 
fully utilizing the light novel um art to its maximum like and I, and i think the biggest uh thing that was intriguing about it is just the anti-hero aspect of it because like mm -hmm. the main character in the video game is like the leader of a player killing guild that just kind of sits on top of their throne and basically he's basically a demon lord and yeah and he only and the guild only guild. has undead characters like undead uh npcs and undead online players when they were still active essentially yeah and like seeing him turn uh seeing them have to go through the new world with that was particularly interesting mm -hmm. uh what's what's next on this list <laughs> zero new... no skyma yeah i, I don't know about that oh know you haven't seen it okay that's no um, i have not that was like a really really old um isekai harem show um oh joy harem, harem yeah isekai. yeah the main character basically gets transported into a different world um via a summoning circle i think and then eventually, uh, he invents the airplane in the universe, and then he uses the airplane to travel between his world and the Isekai world and stuff. And then there are um, 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 flat-chested um, some deers, and then you got um, big-breasted princesses, and it's just the it's just the Isekai harem. Nothing much to say. So we kind of mentioned Gate earlier, and Gate uh, is a uh, particularly notable for its two-way uh isekai where oh, yeah, yeah. instead of just one person being transport transported into the other can uh and staying there there's a gate where you can go back and forth between one world and the other and it's kind of, and it's a very interesting like political military uh drama but i mean it got it it gave us rory mercury at 961 year old molly so how good can it really be I'm just oh. kidding. I watched Monogatari. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Gay... I think Gay was a fun read. I haven't watched it. I've I've read it, but oh, you read it? Okay. Yeah, or manga, but mm. I mean, it was it was interesting. It's fun to see Japan just dumpster a bunch of scrubs with their guns and stuff. <laughs> mm. Uh, and then the most recent of the of the uh isekais on this list is hamafura which is currently airing um that is my life as a villain what's it my life as a villainous all routes lead to doom or something like that uh, yeah 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 yep. i remember that one now yep. and granted it's kind of me it's a i say it's mediocre but i think it's uh but it's also like it's not bad it's a funny show it's it's it's, it's, a, it's, like a, it's a funny show it's humorous and it definitely plays along with what we we're talking about earlier with the character bringing outside knowledge yeah. basically the uh the main character is reincarnated as the villainous or the like you know the yeah. main rival character in the, dating and, sim. in the dating sim and she's just trying to not get exiled or killed but then she turns everybody into her harem but she's so stupid that she doesn't realize that everybody's her harem. <laughs> it's it's a I, it's a funny premise i don't think it's the best of its genre but it's still a funny read, nevertheless. Mm -hmm. And I think Hamafura brings me to the point of the Atome genre, which is rising in the manhwa and manga series. But this is the but Hamafura is like the first that we've really seen of it. The characters being re reincarnated into a uh, you know a duchess uh, character or into an Atome game is something that isn't happening in anime and it's happening all over in manga i've read like probably a good at least 10 of these series really? yeah and i think hamafura is like mid-tier at best of those and there are a lot better shows of it and i'm really excited to see if other um, other shows will pick other up manga that. and yeah, yeah. and uh manwas get adapted because I, i'm very excited for those I think the one thing that irks me about Hamafura is the background art. Okay. It's like yeah, I, it's like kind of like watercolory, but it it just I just don't think it fits. I, I think I, I think you know I think I know what you mean. It feels like they have like a weird filter over over like the background or something. Like it, like like the color doesn't look right. Yeah, it kind of feels like somebody drew just the characters and then stuck them over a green screen. I kind of felt that way with the opening too. Yeah. 
I mean, I think the opening is fire, by the way. It is such a... I think it's such a funny uh, and good opening. It's a funny sequence, and it's, yeah. It's underrated this season. Like, like the spirit of the of the opening reminds me a lot of um, Sugar Song and Bitter Step from Kikai Sensen. It's just like a... It has a, such a merry atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah, and the last one we have on this, me- on this uh, mediocre... I mean, we say mediocre, but they're kind of just not as exceptional as the previous mm-hmm. ones that we've said oh we actually just didn't, to be clear. yeah okay we can we can talk about this last one then we can talk about what makes the shows what differentiates um the categories i guess like what makes the shows that we talked about previously different from the sh- shows that we're talking about right now yeah and this one is inuyasha which mm-hmm. i have seen like bits and pieces of in like magazines but i yeah. never actually went and watched it yep. Like I, I didn't think about this show either until I read like the Wikipedia page that we put that we referenced, and on it Inu- Inuyasha was one of them, and like oh what the, oh oh what, yeah In- Inuyasha was totally an isekai. <laughs> it might be one of the oldest isekais. <laughs> yeah, and so, but yeah. I have nothing particular to say about it as I haven't seen it. Uh huh. Oh but, okay. I, I mean, mean, it's it's a shonen show. It's it's yeah. it's uh for entertainment and action and i think i think inuyasha is i, I think it's a it's a it's mm, what do i say i do think it does a very good job as a isekai because um the main character is basically a girl a high school or a middle school girl i think she's high school i think she's in high school she's in high school and then she basically fell into a well near her near her neighborhood or something and then she got transported into the single period and where there's a bunch of um, yokais and demons, and she she meets one of those demons, and they form a party, and they go fight a bigger demon, and that's basically the whole story. It's basically uh, Mario and Peach fighting Bowser, so, <laughs> but in Japan, yeah. Uh, I, I do think it does make good use of um, it being isekai, though, because they do have moments where, because the well is two-way, they do have moments where people from the other period come to visit the present world, and... While I don't think she brings any particular knowledge into that world, I think she does. I mean, while I don't think she makes she uses anything from her world to her benefit, I do think it makes her a very relatable character in our lives to attach to, and it makes us actually feel like we're in the single period with her because at the time we're still children, and it makes it very very easy to see her as an extension as her of ourselves so I, I do think it does make use of the isekai genre well but because of the demographic so yeah let's uh-huh mm-hmm. let's talk about what makes these like in a separate category i just dropped the die i'm yeah. sorry uh, what make these like a slightly separate category from the uh the realm of that time i got reincarnated slime yojo senki spirit Don't of the way reserve spirit of the yeah. way long horizon konosuba um, what else? Re zero. Basically, yeah, yeah. Basically, like the like the like the first ca- first half of the shows that we talked about. What made those shows different from the current batch, essentially? So you want to start, or do you want me to go? No, no. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So I think a lot of a lot of what set those previous categories, a lot of what set the shows from the previous categories apart is their writing. Lock Horizon has very good writing. No Game No Life has also very good writing, although those that writing may be more on the meta side and the humor side than Lock Horizon. Lock Horizon is very good at world building, very good at creating emotional moments um, during climaxes. So for example, the burger moment is good, um, the train moment was good, um, the dungeon the dungeon clear moment was also really good. It also has some very good, uh, both shows also have very good um, mechanics, game mechanics, because they're both based on video game worlds. No Game No Life maybe not so much, but both of them have involved heavily around games and both shows does a very good job in writing to create a interesting game to begin with and also to create a game that is understandable that the that the audience can easily relate to so those two shows are very good writing same thing with konosuba right konosuba has very good writing in the humor yojo senki's writing might not be on the strong side compared to their previous three shows but but it still has a good writing in the sense that it has an interesting narrative that we can follow. Um, ReZero has th- a very good writing. Yep. Yep. I think that uh, for me, the what separates them is that 
good isekais use the fact that they're in the isekai as like a stepping stone for good writing whereas uh mediocre or like you know less good isekais kind of see as a hurdle it's something that they just like you know get out of the way and then kind of forget about it. not all of each cat uh each category of isekais is like this necessarily because you know hamafura uses the fact that uh it's an isekai very well and there are just like some small things but, but because it's because it's kind of set me off about it. yeah yes so a, a lot of um the really good isekais have inherently good writing so it's not like so if you want to wreck the shows right based on how good they are as a show versus how good they are as an isekai you might end up with a different ordering right for example you might say oh ReZero actually doesn't make that good use of um, it being an isekai, so it might be lower on the list than something like Overlord when it comes to making use of isekai mechanics. But ReZero's writing, it's like you would you would be hard pressed to find somebody who would say that ReZero is a worse show than Overlord overall, both production quality wise and writing wise and whatnot. So you 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 will see right, you will see out of all the um, good isekais that we talked about, a, a lot of them are simply good stories and let's see let's see let, let's see right only konosuba and no game no life i think are shows on this list that oh konosuba no game no life and spirit of the way i think those these three shows are the only three shows out of the seven that we talked about that really hurts from it not being an isekai whereas the other shows like tensura rezero um yojo senki or no uh tensura rezero and lock horizon these shows can actually work um as a high fantasy or as a, a in a genre of their own um yojo senki might not work as well because yojo senki has like a higher force um that's um impacting the flow of things so you, you could say that yojo senki could i work. mean lock horizon has the whole uh oh wow that's a lot uh lock horizon has the whole like you know get out overall yeah. storyline but... yeah but but then you could also argue that um it could just be a normal civ thing right it could just be like civilization where they're just cavemen and then they're just trying to build a civilization although that wouldn't quite make sense because of how fast the technology trans to how fast the technology um expanded so yeah log horizon also would also benefited a lot from being a isekai then um shall we talk about our wall of shame now our wall of shame <laughs> so yeah I, um well I, I guess we could just um finish with uh, concluding thoughts on what makes an isekai? What makes what makes? No, no, we gotta talk about a wall of shame, dude. You really want to talk about those? All right, we can talk about those. So our wall of shame is Ari Freta, which is like, you know, edgy the isekai. I think it's actually a very funny show. It, no, don't get me wrong; it's a funny show, and it's like for all the wrong reasons, though. For all the yeah, because like the CGI was god awful. I just gotta put that out there. How did they mess up that? Bad. And, I mean, like personally, I quite like the uh, the manga adaptation. I oh, don't really? mind it as much as a uh, as um you know the anime in the CGI, mm -hmm. but it's not it's not really that good because it's just one. It's another one of those like power tripping power fantasy MC type deals, mm -hmm. and they just kind of gave it a lot of edge, and that's just kind of what's annoying about it. But it's still I think it's still a funny show nevertheless, but or well, funny it, manga. Well, it's a, it's a, it, I don't know about a manga, but it's a funny show because of the, all the production problems that it went through. Yeah, we're oh. not going to talk about the show, dude. Oh, man. The manga's okay. The manga, I won't, I won't make fun of you for reading and enjoying. Okay. Okay. I pr How I not to summon would. a demon lord? Oh, God. You mean, uh, foreplay, finger bang, fantasy, the isekai? Wait, what, dude? What? Yeah. <laughs> No, no, like there, there's, there's straight up plot points where, uh, main character, who's, a, who's a demon, who's a self-proclaimed demon lord, but socially awkward, which was frustrating as hell, was, uh, would literally like put his fingers on like one of his female companions, and you know inject mana, inject mana or whatever into it, and it would like you know cause them a ridiculous amount of pleasure, and, I mean the first, the first point is just like you know touching the. Uh, like the belly button and stuff and then they get to a point where he straight up fingers one of his companions and does the same thing to give and it gives birth and it's just like 
What the hell did I just watch? Wait, gave it was with a it was bad. Like I I watched it to to uh, compare that to Overlord, and then I just like threw my phone at the wall because wait, <laughs> it's just so different. Wait, he gave birth with his fingers? Oh god, we're gonna get replaced. No, 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 no. Austin. no. She... The males are gonna get replaced. <laughs> oh, we're still getting demonetized. No, I'm just kidding. We're never getting. We, we, demon... we weren't monetized to begin with. Okay. Um, no, he, he puts his fingers, like, inside his companion, injects the mana, and then a demon lord that was inside the girl, that was, like, housed inside the girl, was born quote-unquote born but it was like her soul or something but it's like you know essentially birth are you sure you weren't watching hentai i wasn't that's the sad part i oh, would okay. much rather have been watching hentai than all right that. all right and i'm only spoiling and i'm only spoiling these plot points because i strongly discourage watching it i mean i don't know um it might attract a certain crowd but yeah no yeah. there are better there's better stuff than that if you want that Mm -hmm. uh death march which was just really boring all around watch the op watch the op that's what i have to say watch <laughs> the op of death march and come back and tell me what you think no, 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 no. all right Le leave your comment telling me your first impression of death march no, no, no. Right. please don't all right thank you thank God. you that, 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 that's all that's all the youtube uh self-promotion i'm gonna do for today <laughs> no 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 don't please don't <laughs> uh shichi shay no subaru which i talked about extensively last episode about how much i hate it and then one that I forgot to put on this list is uh, High School Prodigies Have It Easy in Another World, which is just mega power trip. So bullcrap. Oh my god. They just had... Uh, did you watch that out of curiosity? Uh, I watched like the first episode or something. Just the fact that they just... Oh, we're just gonna get, uh, take all these geniuses and then advance civilization literally 500 years in a matter of two weeks. And oh, we're it's just like gonna create a nuclear reactor out of nowhere. This is just... This is totally fair. Oh god, it was awful. Oh my god. Oh god. That's also, definitely one yeah. of the worst shows that I've watched. I just didn't mention it last season. Oh, Hold on, also, I'm gonna like, just out of curiosity, right? Quickly. So we list the five shows in the bad music genre, right? Yeah. What's the time frame for when they're released? It's all within a year, right? Or maybe two years? Uh, Shichi Shinao was 2018. Uh, Here. High School Prodigies was... Some, 20... Something this year. Or last year, yeah. Is either fall 2018 or winter 2019. Ari Fretta was definitely 2019. How Not to Summon a Demon Lord was 2019 as well. Yeah, yeah, that's recent. Yeah, they're all within two years at the, at the very at the very most. Look, look at how many bad isekais are released in, in like in just two years. There's five. There's five. And we probably haven't seen them all. Like, it's just really your mind. Watch, watch Recreators. When the Recreators come out. I remember it came out when I had to serve in the army. So that's like, what, 20, three, four years 17? ago? 2017? 2017. Years, three years, yeah. Sounds about because that's when I remember all the Mother's Basement videos about it coming out. Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember listening to its opening uh, during the during my service. So, yo, those openings were fire. Yeah, dude. Oh my god. Drop. Oh god, they're so good. Yeah, they're really. All right, good. so to close off, we're gonna give a, give you a few recommendations on for me at least manga that I rec that I would personally recommend. Uh, if you want to actually get into isekai manga and you don't mind a little bit of harem and whatever, uh, watch, or, sorry, read Mushoko Tensei. Um, Which is getting Sean actually shared the light novels with me uh, recently, but I haven't gotten around to reading them because I have been playing way too much Xenoblade and Blaze Blue. Oops. Um, <laughs> and... Another one is Kumo Desuga Nanika, or I Am a Spider So What. Both Mushoku Tensei and I Am a Spider So What are slated to receive anime adaptations in the next year or so. So look forward to that. Um, I mean, re in another world as a spider, like it's a it's a it's a power trip. Uh, it's a powerful OP NPC kind of thing, but it's I think it's kind of funny nevertheless. Mm -hmm. And if you want a manhwa to read, read The Duchess Fifty Tea Recipes. Uh, that is one where a uh, a Korean girl, lady, lady, legal, girl, uh, <laughs> a Korean a Korean lady is reincarnated as the spineless and wimpy Duchess of a country that is irrelevant, but I can't remember its name. I don't even remember if it has a name. Uh, and she uses her love of tea from earth to connect with the people around her 
Have you got anything else? Um, go watch Death March OP and comment your first impressions in the YouTube video. Thank you very much, guys. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm, okay, uh, ser- uh, honestly, I, 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 for real this time, for real this time. Uh, uh, any of the show, any of the seven shows that we talked about in the very good category um, in this video, I would definitely recommend watching. Um, in no particular order, um, although I would recommend uh, watching ReZero um, probably the most out of all of them because it's the most, I would say it's the most, um, it's the widest common denominator show out of all the ones that we listed in the very good category. Um, yeah, it's a very good thriller. It's a very good mystery, and it's also it, it's also a very good high fantasy. So it's got it all basically. Um, Spirited Away, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. It's a classic for a reason. Um, otherwise, Konosuba and No Going No Life. I think we already recommended it last episode, so I won't go too much into it. Um, but yeah, otherwise, um, stay away from Isekais, guys. It's a garbage genre. Just go watch other shows. <laughs> <laughs> see you next week or whenever we actually yep. release another or episode. whenever we make the episode yep pretty much